Fourteen hundred years ago, Allah revealed in his majestic word that salt and fresh water do not mix. It wasn't until many centuries later that science discovered this fact, confirming the divine origins of the Quran. Whoa, I'm not sure what that was. I fear that I'm possessed by a jinn, or else a poet. Well, the Bible does say test the spirits, so let me wrap myself in a blanket and I'll be right back. Welcome back to Reason Answers. Much like Muhammad, I've wrapped myself in a blanket to ward off unwanted spirits. But unlike him, I have a discerning mind to see where these spirits are coming from. I've done some quick research and discovered this jinn is known as the propagator of scientific miracle delusion. I found another parcel under his influence on YouTube. With over 2.7 million views, his power is apparent. Fortunately, I previously developed criteria to test such claims of jinn. You can see them on your screen now, or click above for the full explanation of the criteria. Hey, what's that bell sound? I think I might be getting a revelation. He released the two seas meeting. Between them is a barrier neither of them transgresses. Yikes, that was scary. This blanket is inducing mystical trances, but at least it's protecting me from that nasty propagator gin. By the way, did you know that the bell is an instrument of Satan? <gasps> anyway, what does this verse mean? Perhaps the video I found can shed some light. We came across an event that amazed us. There was a great water curtain at the merging point that did not allow these two seas to mix. Well, that sounds interesting, but before I take my shahada, <laughs> let me put the spirit to the test. The first criteria for testing scientific miracle claims is that it must be scientifically accurate. I went ahead and did some research, and it seems that the nice gin graphics are totally fake. <laughs> there is, in fact, no barrier between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. Got to give that jinn some credit, though, as he managed to spread this picture to hundreds of Muslim websites. Unlike the video, it's from a legitimate scientific work. But strangely, the caption has been abrogated. I wonder why. Well, going to the actual source, a cutting-edge 1950 geography textbook shed some light on that. The actual caption is... Boring, and the accompanying text about the figure contradicts the Muslim claim. Evaporation predominates over precipitation and runoff in the Mediterranean basin. Water must enter through the Strait of Gibraltar from the Atlantic to replenish the loss. Water is driven through the strait as a powerful current at 4 kilometers per hour. It seems this barrier is constantly transgressed as any current map will likewise show. Note there are currents across all the other sea boundaries as well, so what's with the funky picture in the thumbnail and on your screen? The ocean scientist who took the photo explains it's actually a picture of glacial runoff entering the ocean, not the meeting of two oceans as is often claimed. The contrast in color is caused by sediment in the water. They do eventually mix, but you do come across these really strong gradients at specific moments in time. Such borders are never static as they move around and disappear altogether, depending on the level of sediment and the whims of the water. So, no fixed barrier here, just a temporary phenomenon with constantly changing borders as the video on your screen demonstrates. Oh, wait a second. I, I, I think I'm hearing those bells again. And it is he who has released the two seas. 
one fresh and sweet and one salty and bitter, and he placed between them a barrier and prohibiting partition. Thanks for the assist, mystical blanket. Maybe the djinn just made a really dumb claim about the Mediterranean, and both verses are actually about salt water and fresh water not mixing. Uh, of course, there are no freshwater seas, but let's assume that the perfectly clear Quran, which explains itself in detail, actually just means two types of water when it says two seas. Fortunately, the propagator jinn also suggests this. Another kind of water barrier on Earth is seen at bays and deltas, where the freshwater rivers flow into the seas. Rivers that have the utmost possibility of mixing into one another because of their surface and bottom currents never mix with salty water in places where they fall into seas. This claim is so absurd that common sense alone should send one running, even if they are wrapped in a mystical blanket. If the river water actually didn't mix with the ocean water, there would either be massive flooding as the barrier kept the gushing river out, or else the salt water would be pushed ever further from the shore. Sadly, the gin delusion is strong, and Muslim websites try to use a second diagram taken from the same book as proof. But what does this graphic actually show? The gradual increase in salinity as more and more salt water is mixed with the fresh the further you get from shore. But what about pictures like this, you ask? Much like the earlier picture, this is nothing more than a temporary phenomenon with ever-changing borders and constant mixing, despite the visual appearance on the surface. The djinn was wrong, and wrong again, but perhaps we can save the science. For that, we need to jump to criteria number four and see what the earliest tafsir actually say about these verses. Ibn Kathir states plainly that the barrier is dry land. Al Tabari and Al Kurtabi offer that possibility, plus two others. The barrier separates the seas of the sky from the seas of the earth, or a spiritualized interpretation about differing sweet and salty peoples. Since science has discovered no seas in the sky, only the first possibility has any chance of making the passage scientific. That interpretation also makes the most sense in context. The author of the Quran was simply marveling at God's wisdom of separating fresh water, which is essential to human life, from salt water. But if that's what that verse means, the rest of the criteria fall apart. No, no, it's not going to happen again. Back to the analysis. Criteria 2 is that the claim couldn't be determined from 7th century technology. But of course, it was common knowledge of nearly everyone then living that the water found in streams and lakes was of a different nature than the sea or ocean water. <laughs> Criteria three is that the claim must be original to the Quran. But of course, previous authors talked about salt and fresh water as being separated. Indeed, Pliny even talks about fresh water not always mixing with salty seawater. In fact, the nature of water also is not deficient in marvels. Patches of fresh water float on the surface of the sea, being doubtless lighter. Finally, criteria number five is that it must go beyond a lucky guess. Well, there are only two possibilities. Uh, either the types of water mix, or they don't. And frankly, the Quran guesses wrong if we take its words at face value. Salt and fresh water readily mix, unlike, say, water and oil. So in the end, we're left either with a false claim about seas not mixing, a false claim about types of water not mixing, or a true statement about there being distinct bodies separated by land. But even the propagator jinn wouldn't dare claim that as special knowledge. So take your pick, Muslims. Either abandon the Quran as inaccurate, stop claiming these verses are miraculous, or willfully close your eyes and pretend there's a miracle when reality says anything but, much like these people did. Thanks for sharing this video. It was really amazing. Scientific facts and indications of Quran are really intelligent. Will you still deny it? This is proof of the truth of Al-Quran, the revelation of Allah, the Creator. 
and the Al-Quran is the holy book and guidance of Islam. This video doesn't left any question. Thank you very much, Masha Allah. To see my other videos on scientific miracles, click here. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like as Iris Demon Possession to bring you this video.